Okay, so um, welcome to our breakout session, Technical Elements of Data Ecosystems. Um, before we start, I just want to mention that um, this is currently a webinar software, so um, you can chat with us um, and ask questions um, via the chat, so we can answer these questions in our Q&A session. Um, but it's not possible that you activate your microphone or webcam or something like that. Um, so we are sticking to the, the chat there. Um, to introduce ourselves, um, or to firstly start with the agenda, um, we start with the first introduction, um, give them a live demo, um, what are t technical elements, and going then to the question and answer phase, um, and have a short outlook to the mobility data space, which, um, yeah, where our technologies are used in. So, um, yeah, basically a short preview on the breakout session two. So, my name is Heinrich Pettenpohl. I'm the chair of the IDSA PlugFest. Um, I'm also um, the office manager of the Research Center Data Spaces from Fraunhofer. And I'm deputy head of the Department Data Economy from the Fraunhofer ISST. And I hand over to Sebastian. Yeah, welcome everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, my name is Sebastian Bader. I'm among other roles, co-chair of the IDSA Working Group Architecture. I'm a team leader here in uh, front of our EIS. And if there is something like that, I am definitely an uh, IDS in evangelist. And uh, very, it's a pleasure for me to now explain you our concepts and what we have achieved already. Hello, everyone from my side. Um, I am uh, Julia Pampus. I am the lead developer for the Data Space Connector. And I am a research assistant at the Department Data Economy at the ISST, yeah, as well uh, as Heinrich. <laughs> okay, thank you. So um, we, I will start with, an, with a broad topic of data ecosystems. So there are many data ecosystems um, we can think of, um, for example, for material science, energy, manufacturing, logistics, healthcare, and smart cities. Um, there are much more data ecosystems, but that are some examples. What all data ecosystems have uh, in common is that um, there is some innovative business models or business services um, that a company or an, an ecosystem wants to provide, but no company has all the data it needs to, to get these business um, model running. For example, when I am a traveler from, who wants to travel from A to Z, um, I'm um, I need many mobile uh, provider or many provider, the transport providers. And um, yeah, not one company has all the data it needs to, to bring me from A to Z um, or to, to give me a um, route from A to Z. So um, I need different, um, um, yeah, different companies there to bring up their data and share their data to give me these uh, innovative service basically. And that is a data ecosystem itself. And what we see now is from an IDS perspective, so, so from an international data space perspective, we can um, technically um, give the infrastructure for these ecosystems. Um, this can look like this. So um, basically we have the IDS who connects different um, data storage and companies um, and, and cloud systems. Um, not to mention that, that the IDS itself is basically for transporting um, data with data policies. So basically what you want to, to achieve is that you change, exchange or share your data and also be capable of um, or be sovereign of this data. So you exchange this with your own usage policies and the um, other partners um, then have to enforce these policies and um, should um, yeah, follow these policies directly. And therefore, we have um, a an, an reference architecture model inside the IDS where we have the basic, um, the basic software called Connector. Maybe I can 
give a pointer to that, um, and connector at the data provider or data consumer. And on the other side also, uh, other side we have also a connector. And these connectors then exchange directly data between each other and share these data for an, an innovative service like um, for the traveling service. But we need some central infrastructure to have these data exchange happens. Um, so we need on the one hand side, the identity provider who is responsible to give identities to the software components, so to the um, software connectors. And we have a broker, which is in our uh, case, something like a phone book. So you get, your, you get in touch with the, um, with the data offerings of other partners and um, then can call these connectors directly. So it's like, like a phone book. And we have a clearinghouse um, where we or the connectors can store information about the data exchange. Um, for example, when we have a policy negotiation phase, um, the agreed policy can be stored in the clearinghouse. So we have a third party here to, to um, yeah, ensure that these policies um, where negotiate in this way. We have also an app store to install um, apps inside and connector and functionalities inside and connector. And we have a vocabulary where we can define our own metadata for the data exchange. So everybody um, knows which data will be exchanged then over the connector. To give uh, you an, 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 an impression um, how a connector and a broker looks like, um, we will now go to a live demo where we show the, the connector on the provider side and the connector on the consumer side with um, different interfaces to, to yeah, actually configure and, and um, handle the connector itself. And we also show the broker interface so that you will get in touch with um, where you can um, search for data and um, search for other connectors to connect to, to build up your ecosystem. And therefore, I want to hand over to Julia. Thank you. So I will now present you the um, current um, implementation of an IDS connector at our department. It's called the Data Space Connector. And the Data Space Connector is um, an open source software project with an own um, website and a GitHub repository. So um, you can find the links on the slide. So maybe you, if you are interested, um, you can just have a look and um, try it out yourself. And so what technologies are used in the data space connector? The data space con connector is a um, Spring Boot uh, Java application that can be set up in Docker and Kubernetes. And um, it handles user management with Spring security and um, every communication with other, um, with, for example, backend systems or other IDS participants is um, TLS encrypted. And uh, with the connector, you can um, offer your data from your um, um, systems to an IDS ecosystem, and the connector helps you to. Um, manage resources and provide the metadata to existing data. And um, it's, um, yeah, yeah, by um, managing it, uh, store, storing it in an in internal database or external database as you like. And the data space connector offers an open API that describes all possible endpoints. And I will now, uh, in show you a demo as Heinrich already said and um, yeah therefore I will start sharing my screen okay so the setup is I I have started two connectors so one connector you can um, from one connector you can now see the graphical user interface and we will, um, I will show you how to um, set up a resource, register at an uh, IDS metadata broker, and um, yeah, how to request those resources from another connector. And um, yeah, therefore, I will just um, start with this uh, graphic user interface. So we have um, somehow an overview what resources are offered in this connector and what type of resources. Uh, 
it is. And I will now first, uh, so just for an introduction, uh, the metadata broker from the Fraunhofer uh, IAIS is now uh, running in our um, central lab, so so I can reach it from with uh, with um, the um, running connector. And um, here you can see that there are already some connectors and um, we can have a look, for example, what resources a connector offers. And I will now show you um, the registration at this broker. So at first we are adding a um, broker with the URL um, the connector has to reach. Okay, there it is. And now I will start adding a resource. So basically this IDS, um, um, this graphical user interface is now interacting with the provided endpoints of the connector. And I will just uh, add some example weather data. I am now sample data. And um, give me a second. We can add some information about the resource, for example, the title, a description, who's the publisher. We can uh, give it some keywords, a license. We can say what version the data is and what language we are providing. Um, maybe I will just this one. And then as the main um, point of uh, IDS metadata, we uh, can add some policy to the data. So a, a data consumer um, knows how long a data can be uh, can be used or in um, for what what um, um, yeah what he can uh, what he is allowed to do with the data. And now I am setting the policy duration usage. For example, you can use the policy five hours and. Um, the data space connector currently provides seven policy patterns. Uh, for example, we can uh, say that someone should be notified when a, a data resource is used or that it uh, can only be used within a specific time interval. And yeah, then I also have to um, tell the connector where it gets the data from. So we are adding a backend connection. For example, now I I just want to provide this data stream with an, an uh, with a, an IDS connector, and I can also, for example, um, um, handle those backend connection here. But I can also um, um, edit right when um, creating those, this resource and. Um, yeah, then I am saving the resource. And now we can see that this um, resource can be deleted or um, edited. And the dashboard is also showing that it knows some resource. And in this broker, we can now see that here, the data space connector, the three above have been there before. So the data space connector is now registered as the broker and it provides our resource that I've just added. And now, as um, Heinrich already uh, explained, the metadata broker can be created from all um, connectors that are connected to it. And for example, you can go here and search for some um, Keywords, for example, you want to have this resource or for a security profile um, and you can see all registered connectors and its resources. And now, uh, for example, as this connector is now um, running lo local on my machine, um, you can also provide some link where you can 
you can reach this connector. So um, I can now, as a data consumer, know that the data space connector provides this resource and I want to, to retrieve it. So I can just um, 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 build up a connection to this uh, uh, link and um, start the IDS communication. And now for showing you also the technical side of a connector, uh, we will use the um, Swagger UI of um, the data consumer to request those data. And um, yeah, so basically the uh, graphical user interface also interacts with all these endpoints, but they are now uh, presented in this Swagger UI, as I said, and we can now um, and this connector also provides some endpoints to request another connector. And so I have to, I have to um, say at what endpoint I want to request the data of the connector. And um, yeah, I, uh, I get a um, response that consists of an IDS specific message that handles all um, um, IDS specific um, attributes as, for example, a um, token and um, the um, connector um, identifier for um, uniquely um, 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 identify the connector in the IDS ecosystem. And um, in the um, payload, I always get um, those requested metadata. And for now, I am just requesting the um, all resources of the provider connector that he provides, and I can um, just um, 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 take this resource I have um, 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 seen in the um, broker uh, UI, and I can um, request it. And so we all always have to um, request the, the metadata and the data because the metadata describes the um, actual data string and um, for um, um, retrieving the contract that, that was provided to the um, data resource we have first have to make an, a description request and we get this um, metadata of the resource and um, yeah, we can, um, at this moment, the resource is stored in the consumer um, connector. And um, so now as we have received those metadata, we can just start to um, request the, the actual data from the um, provider connector. And um, so we just have to um, take the, um, put the same um, string and we can um, search for a specific artifact that we want to request. For example, um, this artifact tells us that the data string is a JSON string. I will. I don't want to get too much detail here. You have to provide some parameters. And the contract, so everything I am doing now by hand can be, of course, be provided uh, automatically by some service that um, requests those endpoints. And then we start the actual data request. And um, what the connector does at this moment is to make a, um, a technical policy in, uh, um, negotiation. So you have to, as a consumer, you have to, um, yeah, to provide us, um, somehow an exception um, an um, agreement or rejection of the provided policy so the provider gets uh, can be sure that the consumer read the policy and that it accepts the policy and that the consumer enforces the policy so for example when i am changing this previously um, set five hours of duration to six then we would have not uh, not have been able to retrieve the data and so because i i got the data as i showed before 
this policy negotiation was successful, um, we, we retrieved the data string and we put the data, the connector put the data string to the metadata in an external database. And now a um, external service, for example, that um, put the um, data space connector in front of it can uh, go and retrieve the data from uh, its internal database. So there we, the connector provides the data string to an external service. And at this point, and also at this um, artifact request on the provider side, the connect, uh, connector always checks, um, makes some kind of a usage control or access control. So, um, for example, if the um, saved policy said that um, um, the data can just be used in uh, in a specific time interval, and the um, it is um, the current date is not. In this interval, you will get an exception here that uh, this policy, um, yeah, a policy restriction was found, and the connector is currently able also to um, make an automatic check every minute. So, if um, some policy said that the data should be deleted at some point, and then the data will not be um, stored in this uh, data uh, consumer anymore. Um, yeah, so I think I have showed everything, so I will hand over to Heinrich again. Okay, thank you. Um, maybe you can, you can switch to, to our cameras. So um, we're going now to the, or maybe next next, next slide, we're going now to the, our question and answer um, session. So um, maybe we can answer some chat questions here. And therefore I go through the camera models. Um, yeah, the first question which was raised was who owns and operates Clearinghouse, Broker and App Store? Um, currently, that's a kind of open discussion inside the IDSA. So there are some colleagues who or some companies who currently wants to provide these Clearinghouse, Broker and App Store. Uh, for example, the trust company, um, there will be a breakout session in, in breakout session two, there will be an, um, breakout for trust itself. So um, you can get more information what trust is. Um, but basically every company um, who wants to provide a um, clearinghouse broker and app store wants to operate these um, can do this um, as long as they get certified by the IDSA certification. Okay. I think we're running out of time a bit, so maybe we can just pick a few and answer the other questions later. I've just seen one interesting one asking about Solid and how IDS fits to Solid. Actually, uh, I even wrote an, a research paper about that, but I do not want to bore you with that. Just I want to ping one thing, and that is that we um, not only have a multi-part message protocol, which you've just seen, but we are also um, working on a REST-based and linked data platform-based protocol binding which actually is the same than uh, Solid is using. So I think the technology stack and the basic ideas from Solid are actually very close and, and very easy to implement uh, with, with IDSA technology. And actually we have a few connectors which directly map these things together. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's a really the answer to that. So Heinrich, um, I think we, we rather skip the introduction of the mobility data space architecture. Yes, also think so. We have we have time to twenty four. Um, so twelve twenty four is um, the end of the session. So we have some time left, um, basically. Um, but we can skip the mobility thing and get more about um, the questions. So um, yeah. maybe one thing, just a uh, follow up. Yes, definitely. Uh, I will send a link to that um, and also a link to the uh, IDSA protocol specification so that you can dig into that. Um, no problem. Then there's a question. Can you explain again what prevents a data consumer from copying data and using it inside of agreed policies? Um, so basically, um, there is 
not directly a technical solution for that. So we are thinking about how we can encrypt data and um, not allowing the decryption until you um, enforce the policy. But basically what we currently have is the um, certification part. So basically the certification um, have to be done th um, over the um, IDS connector and all software which are using the data and um, inside the certification we ensure that um, policies should be enforced or are enforced um, and that's for the for the technical part and the other part is about the company certification so also the users and, and, and administrators etc um, are in, in or the processes behind that inside the company are also certified. So there are two points about certification. The other point is um, when you break these policies, then um, you have, this is basically illegal because um, you break the certification criteria, and therefore um, someone can blame you. Um, that's not a direct, direct point, but basically it's, it's the same for, for contracts itself. So basically when, when you sign a contract and say, okay, I do not um, do not um, forward these data, that's the same thing. Um, you are relying on these um, basic contracts um, as you do it in, in IDS, but on the IDS part, um, it's written down technically and there are technical um, software to enforce these policies. So it's more than what we have currently. So not only contracts, but also usage policies. And that's that's what um, IDS is about. And we had a question about the configuration manager. Um, I guess you can briefly also answer that. Um, where can you get it and, and when is it published? Mm -hmm. Um, so the configuration, so that's only the half truth, uh, Julia and I tell uh, during the live demo. So um, basically what we have there was the um, data space connector and above the data space connector, there was this configuration manager with the UI. Um, the configuration manager will be available till end of the year um, on, on GitHub. So also open source on the, under Apache 2. Dot zero license. Um, so currently it's not available, but you can ask me directly or, or wait till, uh, until end of the year to, to get it directly. Um, and it was, the question was also raised for the broker, I think, and the other components like the broker to build up a running working example. That's mm -hmm. mainly to you, Sebastian. Yeah, definitely. So we, we basic infrastructure components, uh, all of them, are um, published or will be published soon as an open core variant. Actually, we have um, done all the preparations for that already. And those things will be linked from the International Data Spaces GitHub repository. So you will find references and the source code there. And that will also be, I would say, uh, your, your first point where you can check out more information. We had, we had another um, question in, in the previous section about how we define the broker, I think, and I would just like to use one minute to answer that. Uh, on the International Data Spaces um, website, you'll find publications, and among them, you'll find a specification what a broker is. And, and the broker in that terms, actually, I would rather not say broker, but a metadata broker, um, so not a message broker in contrast. And we describe there which requirements a metadata broker has to fulfill and to be certified as a valid IDSA component. Then um, I see another add-on to, to the solid question, um, pinging to Ruben. Actually, um, of course, I know him. Everybody in, in the community knows him, <laughs> especially in Europe. So yeah, thanks for pointing me to him. Um, but actually, um, yeah, as, as I just said, uh, we meet on, on regularly each, each year on conferences and so on. So I think the ideas Ruben and his group in Ghent are proposing are also the same, which we implemented in the IDS REST protocol. So therefore, I think, uh, yes, thanks for that. But uh, as I just said, uh, we we're connected already. There was another question. How much of an effort would you estimate to implement these data space connector? Um, 
that that's a good question. That comes a bit um, up to the, your use case. So, um, what do you want to 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 do, to do with the data space connector? Basically, what the data space connector uh, currently does is that you can connect an HTTP um, endpoint to it, and from these HTTP con endpoint, you can um, yeah offer data to the IDS and also the other way around. So you can ask for IDS data and bring it to an HTTP endpoint. Um, and that's fine for you. Then it's really trivial to implement that. Um, so need you some days to, to get in touch with the, um, with the API of the data space connector, but it's not, not really difficult. When you want to um, incorporate it into a bigger use case where you want to exchange massive data or not only data via HTTP, but via, I don't know, MQTT or whatever in, inside your backend system, then it's much more work because you have to, to implement such an, an yeah, basically an, an gateway or an interface to, to your own systems inside your backend. Okay. Maybe if we have one second, then I'll just answer the last question. And then I think um, we need to switch over to the next sessions. Um, but the metadata actually in the IDS needs to be um, represented in JSON LD, linked data variant of, of JSON. That's a must have. That's uh, something we need in order to achieve interoperability. But the productive data, so in our example, the weather data itself, does not necessarily need to be in JSON. It can be anything, it can be even binary. So I think, therefore, the answer is easy. Okay, um, so time is running up. Um, thanks for your questions. Um, you can also directly connect us via LinkedIn, email, or whatever. We are present um, in various um, communication channels. Um, so thank you, everybody, for your questions. And um, I will hand over to the live stream itself. So um, maybe you can go back to, to the live stream. And from that on, you have um, then the possibility to go to the breakout session too. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.